Hello, it's Wednesday. Sorry for no video last week, but I didn't have anything that I could actually show you that I was working on. Um, and that's because I've been working on a commission um, that was actually supposed to be a surprise. And I can't reveal it yet, but it's done. I finished it a few days ago. Um, there will be a showcase video going up sometime at the start of next week. Uh, so you'll see what I was working on and there will not be a tutorial for it because I didn't do it on camera. But what have I been working on that I can show you? Well, got some ghosts. A woo, ghosty woos. So, I got bored of not painting my armies and decided to paint my armies. So I'm starting off with these, uh, well, these Glaive Wraith Stalkers for the Night Haunts. And this is just my Chain Rasps recipe. Um, for the Ghosty Woo Roby effects. And I'm just using that for pretty much the entire models. And, yeah, knocked these out. The dry brushing had already been done, which is probably more time consuming than the tinting. Um, the skulls took about five minutes per model in total. Yeah, just batch painting everything. Um, that's largely just because they're not a lot of smooth surfaces to do any blends on or anything like that. So it's pretty much just a case of base coat it and then do a few highlights in a really rough fashion just with the tip of the brush and then plonk a bit of Agrax Earthshade in the shadows at the end of it. I think it's come out pretty good for tabletop. Um, also use the same method on the skin of the drum for the drummer. We're just giving it a nice a nice texture. Need to work on the drumstick a bit, but uh, yeah. So that's that's what I've been working at. These guys I've probably spent about an hour and a half total on them so far. Um, I sprayed the weapons with a metallic because that was going to be easier than painting it on. And I need to paint the hafts and their arms. And then, oh, I also forgot to paint the spines that are poking through their robes. Um, but that's because I wanted to paint a little bit of spray a bit null oil or some black ink or something just on the top, just to darken them down a little bit because they came out a bit too light. But these bring me on to an interesting topic, which is that Games Workshop is discontinuing all of its glazes. Now, I know that's only four paints. But they're going away, and no one knows what they're being replaced by, if anything. Odds are they're being replaced by a contrast paint in the same colour, because, um, well, a little bit of history about Games Workshop glazes. One, no one knows what they're for. <laughs> it's kind of a running joke. But they're, a they're just inks, right? These are, these are actually just inks. They're watered down a little bit, because Games Workshop loves to water things down and then sell them to you, because there's more profit in that. But, no, seriously, they're actually... Normal inks are usually a bit too highly pigmented to use straight out of the pot, whereas you can use these straight out of the pot and they give you a nice little boost of saturation in that particular colour. There are four colours. You've got blue, red, green and yellow. And they're all being discontinued. And I know a lot of people use these, um, especially if you're painting, say, Imperial Fists. Or in my case, my recipe for Night Haunts uses a mix of the blue and the green, and then just the green through an airbrush to tint over pre-shading. And, you know, you can use any inks for these, but I've been using these because I had them, and I mixed up a whole batch of uh, the blue-green mixture, and I've now run out of that. So, they're being discontinued. I went on Element Games and I ordered uh, five pots of each of the blue and the green, and then an extra two pots of green, just, to, just for good measure, because obviously there's a pure green step on these guys. Um, so yeah, they're probably being replaced by contrast paints because the really bright colours in the contrast paints range are actually just inks. Um, if you want to know the difference between an ink and a paint, um, a paint is a suspension of particles in a medium, so like muddy water. The mud in the water will eventually separate and the mud will sink to the bottom and the water will sit on top. Um, whereas inks and dyes are a solution which means that the 
uh, pigment is basically dissolved into the medium and they will not separate but that also means they're a lot more transparent which is really useful if you're airbrushing and want to give something a candy coat or just a tint um, people have used them for years in this way uh, Lester Bursley um, aka awesome paint job uh, his YouTube channel loads of videos on how to paint any space marine by basically doing a pre-shade and then tinting them with ink um, works great I've used them for years I absolutely love the method and yeah since con since the highly pigmented bright colored contrast paints are most certainly going to be inks don't know about the other colors they said that some of them are inks and some of them are um, some of them are dyes and some of them are suspensions they said but normal paints are a suspension ink and uh, inks are a dye and usually the, the more highly pigmented stuff is probably going to be inks so the, the consistency of the contrast paints is a lot thicker than this. Like this is really, really, really watery and very thin, as you can see. Um, so I'm not going to rely on that. So I'm just while while all the stores have it in stock, I'm picking up as much, some of the glazes uh, uh, for anything that needs exactly that glaze. For everything else, I already own. Oops. Ah dropping things all the time. I already own some Vallejo Game Color inks and I've had these for years as well. Um, I use the, I have a, they come in more colors than the GW glazes came in. I've used the purple a lot. I use this for doing shadows on skin. Um, and I don't think I have their yellow. No, I've only got these four colors. Um, their violet's really, really nice. Um, so these could replace it, but I don't know how heavily pigmented they are in comparison to the GW glazes, which is why I've just ordered the big batch of GW glazes so that I know for certain I can do the rest of my night ones. Because I worked out I can get something like 40 infantry models out of um, two pots of this. So about 40 doing the airbrush technique that I use for tinting. And I got about 80 to 90 models to paint plus some really big ones so I just decided I'd get five of each and that should future proof me for that army in the future so let's have a quick look at the difference so I'm gonna use so I've got some paper here hang on we'll get these ghosts out of the way this is gonna be dead quick and this is mostly because I don't know what the difference is in coverage between them and I'm curious, so we're going to learn together. There's a good paintbrush. Ah, this'll do. Won't it? Yeah. That moves around. So, let's have a look at the blue one. I don't know why I'm shaking it, they won't separate. So, I'm just going to apply some of the blue straight out of the pot because this is usually how I use it. So, that's one coat of the Gulliman Blue. Dead simple. Now, this is Vallejo's Game Color Ink Blue. I can already tell this is a lot darker, more highly pigmented. Yeah, so this is a much darker blue tone than the Gulliman Blue. You can see there. So just mixing these straight uh, together and using them as a replacement. So one-to-one -one replacement for Games Workshop glazes, they are not. But what happens if I thin them down a little bit with just some water? Which you can do with inks. And I often do when I'm putting them through an airbrush if I don't want them to be too intense. So, oh. That's actually pretty close. So, sad. Another couple. And I'll put it on the other side of it, so. That's uh, a slightly different shade. I'll call it a little bit greener. Um, no, so it's, it's a little, the, the Games Workshop one's a little bit darker. 
actually, but it's pretty close and you can get a similar translucency just by thinning them down. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick compare with the green one as well. So again, this is GW's Way Watcher Green straight from the pot, which is very, very translucent. And you can see that if this was, if these were the contrast paints they're coming, I guarantee these would be much higher pigmentation than the GW glazes have been. So again, not a one-to-one -one replacement. And let's try the game color green. Again, that looks very dark in comparison. And it's slightly less yellow as well. It's, so it's a slightly different green. Way Watcher Green is quite a yellowy green, which is part of the reason why I like it. Um, so yeah, that's quite highly pigmented. Uh, let's thin it down a bit. It's not going to change the fact that it's... Yeah, so that's... Yeah, it thins down, which is a much more, much more similar um, transparency. So... There is a colour difference in the inks. The GW Waywatcher Green is much more yellow than Game Colour's just green, but Game Colour has a lot of different colours in their inks range, um, so you might be able to find something that matches. And I'll just do a quick comparison with the red. Sorry if this is not what you wanted today, but I was going to do it anyway, and I figured I may as well record it. So let's use some blood letter straight out of the pot. That's pretty intense. And again, game colour ink straight out of the pot. I'd say it's actually more uh, shifting towards the blue it, blue side of red there. In comparison, this is quite an orangey red. This is a relatively purpley red in comparison. I tell you this is actually closer to pure red than this is. This is very, very kind of yellowish. And again, I'm just gonna add one, two. Oops, splash it everywhere. And then Yeah, you can see the difference in the colour there. But yeah, thinning it down for transparency isn't an issue. Which means that if you can find a colour that you like, that is close enough to the GW glazes that you're happy with it, then these will probably go further because they cost less than the GW glazes, and you can thin them down to make them go further. Or maybe you'll just need less coats or whatever it is you're doing. Um, another ch top tip with inks is that sometimes... If I want to maintain the saturation in a paint, but I want to increase its transparency, I'll use an ink to thin down a paint. Yeah, um, so sometimes I'll mix some red ink in with my um, Evil Sun Scarlet, for example, to make it uh, thinner, but still highly saturated and more transparent. So I do that sometimes. Not all the time, very, quite rarely, but it is a, it is a good tr trick. Um, also good for putting through an airbrush. These are great for putting through an airbrush. I use this purple, which is a brilliant colour. Hang on. I'm just going to show these off now. Since I've got them out, there's some purple. A bit gummy at the top. So the purple is gorgeous. I love it. Nice, highly saturated purple colour there. But I usually thin it down couple of drops, put it through my airbrush and use this to spray shadows on uh, Space Marine faces. Um, probably thinned down even more than that actually. Purple's quite a dark colour. But this is great for adding like 5 o'clock shadow. There you go. Lovely. Look at that. Yeah, that's great for adding five o'clock shadow to Space Marines, for example. 
And that's how I did the heads for my raptors. Using purple ink sprayed from underneath in order to create the initial shadows. It works great. So there we go. Um, the other one is Lamenta's Yellow, which I've got here. I love this. I have a tendency to just glaze this over any bright colour in order to boost the saturation of it. Um, it's a weird effect, but I think because yellow is in the kind of in the middle of the colour spectrum of visible light that humans can see, glazing yellow ink over a surface just kind of seems to increase the saturation of everything it touches. Um, it's a really weird one, but this yellow ink is lovely. I've always loved Lamenta's yellow, and I might have to get some more of this as well. But I've got most of a pot. But yeah, I, I used this on a project I painted recently. Uh, the secret project, in fact. And I just used this to boost the saturation on a few points, and it looks really, really good on models. Um, on paper, it has a tendency to absorb into the into the paper because it's so so fluid, and it's uh, dyeing the paper rather than actually sitting on top of it like paint does. But uh, on models, it will just sit, form a barrier. It takes a little longer to dry than paint. Um, but if you thin it down, it takes less time to dry because the water evaporates faster than the medium. So, yeah, good stuff. But just be aware, the glazes are going away. So if you use them for an army project, go stock up because these are not exact matches. Um, and I doubt you will find exact matches anywhere. So if you don't want this to be a subtle color shift difference in your army that indicates, you know, well, this is the stuff I painted after 2019 when I ran out of Lamenta's yellow. You need to go and buy a bunch of pots of this. I know a few people with Imperial Fists armies just like ran out and cleared up their games workshop store of Lamenta's Yellow because it's so important. So there you go, that's a public service announcement and a little bit of a demonstration of the different colours of ink that were available. Um, but yeah, if you're just starting out with inks, just get these because they're cheaper than Games Workshop. More highly pigmented, so you get more use out of them. And they come in more colours. And yeah, I, thinning down contrast paint so that they're a smooth medium seems like not the best way to spend your money because if you're going to use contrast paints, use them for what they are um, because, again, they're just inks and pigments. So if you're going to put them through an airbrush, get something that will go through an airbrush easier and not have to be thinned down extra or that's more highly pigmented. So my hands are covered in purple ink now. From the lid. That is a danger with these things. Like it gets everywhere after works. Doesn't it? Just kind of goes gummy around the lid. Anyway, that's it. I've been painting stuff that I'm not allowed to show you, and also those ghosts. So I hope you've uh, had a good couple of weeks of painting. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and indulging me in my little glaze versus inks color checks. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.